Hey, let's talk about indicators and how they function and how to overlay them, adjust them, and arrange them in the proper order. So if you look over here, you see I have the bid and the ask and the spread is supposed to be right here, but since the market's not open, it's not going to show up. So let's go into studies and edit studies. And here is this bid and ask label right here, the first one in my list. And the way you put these in order is you'll notice arrows up and down here. And this will allow you to move one indicator up and that one down or whichever one you want first in the list over here. This is how you do it. And most indicators have adjustments and the adjustments would be here. Like, for instance, this indicator turns red if the spread is too far apart. So here I set the spread to $0.09. Cents. So if the spread exceeds $0.09, cents, it's going to turn red, and that informs me the spread is further than I want to pay. So that's how you would adjust that. And... I talk a lot about the market forecast tool that comes with Thinkorswim, and you'll see it down here. It's the blue line, and this one is the timing indicator, and this one is the MACD histogram. So you have to put them in order, or you, you get, uh, I guess you could call it a not-so-clean view. Like, for instance, if I move this down, well, I moved it up. Let me move it down. So if I move this down, like right now, you can see the lines are on top of the MACD. It's in the background. So if they were in the wrong order, I apply it. You're going to see it's covering up parts of the lines. So you want to have your MACD up here at the top so that it's in the background and doesn't cover up the two indicators that you have here. When you load the market forecast tool, I'm going to turn on the indicators that it's going to show up with when you first load it. And it has multiple lines, but the only one you really need is going to be the intermediate, which is this one. So you can select which one of these lines, like this one here, the momentum, we can turn it off right there. Uh, the near term, we can turn it off. Go to the intermediate, change the line thickness to two and whatever color you prefer, and it'll remove the lines. Because you really only need the trend part of, of this indicator. That's the most reliable to me. You get too many lines on a chart and it just gets confusing for most people, even myself. So basically that's how you, you do these indicators. And this is the pullback setup that I use and there's a video on it. If you want to use the, I don't know which one of the indicators I had at the bottom of that video, I might have had the MACD and the MACD2 line but I actually use the MACD histogram, the market forecast tool, and the timing indicator. And you can find those on my other videos. So if you want to add this eight moving average here, and this is the 200, and this is the VWAP, uh, you go to your studies and edit studies, and you can search for the exponential. I always type in EXP and you double click it and move it over to here. And you can adjust it here by selecting the length of eight. And down here, uh, I do the thickness of two and blue and I uncheck the upper. Well, I thought it did but I uncheck the upper and the lower signals. I don't really need them. I have my own and I'll 
the pullback arrows. And I guess that's the 50, not the 200 that I have on there. This would be the 50, the VWAP, and the 8 exponential moving average. So you just find find them on here. You can like I moved over two X potentials and I made one on the eight and one on the fifty. You can type in VWAP here, VW, it pops right up. Move it over. Let me see. I think on this one I also unchecked the upper band. It's not checked, and the lower band, and this cleans it up. You only really need the VWAP itself, and I also changed the style to these dotted lines and thickened it up a bit and called it yellow and it ends up looking like this but you can adjust your your indicators and and add different things in thinkorswim that benefit you I like to kind of keep it clean like this uh, to me this is the best way and in my opinion the pullback in the pullback setup video it's the best one so far uh, it's the most accurate you really can't go wrong with it but I always encourage everyone to go to your on-demand and practice with it so that you know how to use it well and the stocks I try to play in the on-demand is I I watch for let's say for instance tomorrow's Monday and tomorrow's leading gapper was the stock play of the day and it rose all all day and it fell all day and it just kept moving around well and on demand you're not going to be able to pull that data up until two or three days probably thursday or friday of next week you'll be able to pull up monday but if you write them down each day and, and keep writing them down whenever you want to practice an on demand just look down at the, the stocks that you wrote down and go find that stock that was really powerful that one day. I know UCAR was one from last week, uh, maybe on June 1st. Right here, I think this is the day that it, yes, this is the day that it took off and, and a lot of money was made on it. But if you keep track of these, it makes on-demand easier because if you don't track them, you're going to end up over here trying to find something that's really good. And they're not really the greatest selections because the on-demand doesn't let you use scans or anything like that. Uh, it just, if, you, if I click the on-demand, you see the scans disappear. But it won't let you use scans in there, and the best way to do it is to track the stocks. That's going to be it for this video. I hope this clarifies things for you, and thank you for watching.